Right then, I've had a bit of a challenge from a mate. Right then, as I said, I've had I've been issued a little bit of a challenge from a mate. It's it's kind of it's a messing challenge, right? Okay, um, Errol, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's the guy who prints all my t-shirts and banners and stuff for the um, for the stall, right? Uh, he needed some wood ripped for something he was doing, so he came out to use the bandsaw. And we hit this nail when we were when we were ripping it. You can see the nail there, right? So we didn't rip this part. There were big long things we were ripping anyway, right? So anyway, after we hit that nail, he threw this th this bit to me and says, "See if you can make something out of that in less than 30 minutes." So this is the challenge I've got now. This isn't the video I was planning for this week, but I thought it was a bit of crack. Might as well try it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take get that nail out of there then I'm going to cut this square and we'll stick it on the lathe and see what we can come up with so I'll pull that nail cut it square cut the corners off and I'll be back in a sec right then we've squared off I've torn it to knock the corners off now the thing about this is as you can probably see here this is basic pine it's a terrible wood to torn but uh, as I said he challenged me to do something so we're gonna have a go at it. So I'm gonna whack this onto a faceplate quickly, stick it on, and the macro camera is gonna be pointing at a timer the whole time. All right? Uh, and what I'm gonna do during the video is I'll speed it up and stuff, I won't cut away. So you can watch the clock the whole time. Now, it's a new clock thing I'm trying, so hopefully it'll work. Uh, it's a new stopwatch thing. I'm trying so as I said hopefully it'll work but um, as I said we'll stick this on to a face plate and get going what I'm gonna try for is a peanut bowl see if I can do a peanut bowl in 30 minutes or less basically see if I can do a bowl in 30 minutes or less right um, you know should be a bit of crack bit of a challenge and we'll see how we go I could put this on a warm screw and stuff, but because I'm going to be turning as quick as I can, I really want to make sure that this thing does not move. Right then, we're set up. Uh, I said I'm going to go for a peanut bowl, and the finish I'm going to use is going to be uh, Amsterdam Strings Burnishing Oil. Right, so I'm going to start the timer and we'll get going with this. I think I have everything prepared to give me. Uh, like everything sharpened and ready to go so one two three go right right I'm gonna be turning pretty quickly because it's small first thing I'm gonna do place it off Slightly low, I'm not going to bother rounding it off because I'll do that as I'm turning the shape. Mortis marked in this. I'm gonna go mortis instead of tenon because basically it's quicker. Right, we're a minute in. Marked. Mm. Right, my parting tool. As I 
I said, this is point, so it's probably not going to turn nicely. So that's one disadvantage that I have in doing this one. Too low. And this will be normal, like, construction timber. Right, here's the mortars marked. Now we start getting some shape into this. Right, I'm not putting a foot on this. Because of the type of wood it is, I don't think your foot would work nicely on it. Right. Point, if you're ever cutting it, um, can be nice. I need to take a little bit more off there. Can be nice, but uh, be aware you have to be very careful with your cuts because it will tear out like crazy. Especially like normal construction timber will tear out like crazy. Right. So you have to be very precise with your cuts. The only thing about the cutting point is it does make the workshop smell lovely. Right, nearly there. bump there so I'm gonna get the finish cut into this Start sanding that. There's a little bit of tear out there, but it should sand out. Hopefully, right. Start sanding on this now. No, nope, we won't. That cut is terrible. That cut is absolutely terrible. I need to save time on this. Now I'll sand this. Right. That, I'm just going to speed through this. I'm going to keep it running. Right, we are six minutes in. The moment. I'm going to keep everything running so you can watch the time. Right, now, I know I usually sand up to 240, but because I'm putting burnishing oil on this, I'm actually sanding from 
we're starting at 150 and going up to uh, 600 so we blow that off I want the burnishing oil to actually go into this. Um, right, the hand machine burnishing oil is certified, feels safe, and it's got this beautiful citrus smell off it. And I'm not putting any sanding seal or anything on this because, as I said, I want this burnishing oil to go into it a bit because of the colour that it'll bring out. Yeah, finish cuts and sanding is fine. Right now I gotta burnish this in. Oh the smell the smell of the pine and the citrus is gorgeous. So I need to create heat here to burnish this in, so speed up a bit. Here we are, 12 minutes. Now this burnishing oil will give a sheen rather than a shine, but it leaves um, surfaces smooth as silk. Absolutely gorgeous feeling after when this is done. If you want it to go shinier, you put on more coats. But it's absolutely fantastic gear to use if you want a sheen. And there we go, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah, that is quite pretty and it's actually bringing out the pine nicely. Normally I don't like working in pine because it's, to be honest, it's a terrible wood to turn. Right now, get this off. Mm, time, 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 time. 14 minutes, we've been at it. Come here. Alright, we've been 14 minutes so far. 20 seconds. Alright. starting to give right this could go flying because the point is starting to go as I said it's not great wood to turn right then let's face it off for us Start hollowing. And it's gone. It's gone. Right then, the point snapped off there. If I can find that piece, I will try and see it back in. If I can find the piece that flew off. Right now, well, that didn't go as planned, obviously. And as I promised ages ago when I started the channel, if something goes wrong, I will always show it. And if I can't explain what happened, right. As I said, this isn't great timber to use. It's just construction timber. Um, where I made a mistake trying to save myself a few seconds was I used a mortise instead of a tenon. Now with this wood, even with a tenon, 
they can blow <coughs> excuse me they can blow um, but if you look at it here right you'll see that where it went is on the rings there's a perfect one right along that ring they're the weak spots in the timber right uh is that not great timber it actually wasn't turning out too bad i said it was just a bit of a fun challenge and uh would a tenon have made much of a difference possibly rather than the mortise possibly but as i said this is just construction timber it's not great stuff it's very very loose ground right and uh as that i always show these things especially for new turners who this could happen to and they'll get disheartened or something it happens to us all right we all get blowouts uh i'd say possibly one in 20 one in 25 balls i do something goes wrong with right but uh as i said well stuff happens and it's how you handle it is the thing just forget about it and move on to the next one so if you enjoyed that or got anything out of it if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video and i'll see you in the next one